On this episode of Modified, we have the Cameraman's FJ Cruiser, and this thing has probably some of the best mods I've ever seen on an FJ. Hey, Jono, you're behind the camera. How are we gonna do this? I don't know, you booked it in. I know a guy. Who are you gonna call? Ghost Productions, we ain't afraid of no filming. Hey, Phil, Phil, I need you ASAP. We've got a cruiser to film right now. Land Cruiser? FJ, FJ Cruiser. Hey, get out of here. You I'm available? I'm working, I'm working, I'm working here, mate. Get the call. Mate, mate. You there, mate? Hello? Yeah, yeah, mate, I'm still here, I'm still here. Yeah, yeah. We're up in the hills, get here pronto. Yeah, no, I'll see be ya. there. Can't you see I'm fing working here, mate? Cross is averted, we now have our cameraman behind the cameras and we've got our cameraman from behind the camera, in front of the camera. How does it feel being in front of the camera? Yeah, not enjoying it at all. Let's not go there. <laughs> FJ Cruiser set up for long distance touring and it's a 2012 model. Something really cool I want to point out straight away. How many nights you spent in that tent? Over a thousand or under a thousand? Probably over a thousand. Over a thousand. And the best part of this vehicle will be the back. Yeah. The 12 volt window. Custom gull wings, custom modifications to his fridge so he can actually open it and just the way it's all set up in the back of an FJ space. There's not much of it. Let's check it out. You've coated the bar and something? Yeah, so this is wrapped the liner because I really don't like this bar. You don't so like the bar? Tried to disguise it a little bit. Okay, so why don't you like the bar? It's cracking, it's moving positions, I'm just not happy with it. Not because you keep hitting emus? Uh, I haven't actually hit any animals with this bar. Oh, just, just my car? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we won't go into what it is then? No. Probably, okay. probably best not to. <laughs> I see you put the number plate on correctly. Yes, yes. As opposed to some other idiot. <laughs> well... Not me at no. all. <laughs> Your plate actually opens up. It does. Winch? What do you got in there? That was a old Tigers 11 winch which fouled me on Cape York, pulling an 80 series out of the creek. Okay. You seem to be recovering a lot of vehicles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, well, first one in usually uh, does that. Oh, so the rope's cut as well? Yep. Is that what broke on it? I think the motor let go. Oh. Yeah, so we had it all wound up around the aerial to just get it out of the way while we finished ca sure. Cape. I spy with my little eye a recovery point that is completely bent the wrong way. Yep, that happened up in the Northern Territory where I was pulling out a patrol that had got himself in a bit of a situation and down to the chassis. Ouch. Yep, I wish I had have bridled it up to both recovery points with one strap um, just to take the load off. She was obviously over there because that... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it actually, as I came back, it swung me around as well. So apart from the bull bar, I did have some side steps from the same company, um, but they just went up to the task, so I removed them and made some custom rock sliders. What material did you use? Uh, chromoly. Oh, chromoly. Yeah. Nice. And then I wrapped a line them, yeah. This episode of Modified is brought to you by The Terrain Tamer eStore. So if you're looking for replacement parts for your four-wheel drive, they are worth checking out because they'll probably have what you need. So the colour is factory jungle green, which has been resprayed. While I was at it, I resprayed the bonnet and the roof. The roof normally comes white, but I changed that to matte black. Up top is my rooftop tent. It's a Motop. Uh, clamshell which houses my shower tent, solar, 130 watt solar, max tracks and my shovel. So with the Motop tent we discussed I've spent a fair few hours in this. The only thing I didn't like about it was the self-inflating mattress. So I've changed it out for an 80 mil deluxe mattress. Yeah it's held up really well in the rain as well as hot days. On the other side I've got a Bushwhacker 270 degree awning and that's been pretty good. I got a, an attachment made for it which clips in under here so when it does rain no water drips into the kitchen area and keeps everything nice and dry. So this is a bit of a contraption I made up before going to Cape York. My brother-in-law came with me and he needed somewhere to put his swag. Uh, while I was at it I also fabricated a little jerry can holder and um, it's saved me a couple of times. Then just got the uh, usual bin bag. Keep a couple of things like ground mat and uh, the shovel for the toilet. Suspension-wise on the FJ, what height are we sitting at? 
So I've got a Dobinson two inch on the front and Old Man Emu on the rear. Oh, just a two inch? Just two inch. Looks higher, I reckon. Oh, I think it looks lower. <laughs> I, want, I want to go the three inch. The reason I had to go Old Man Emu on the rear is because when I was going up to Cape York, I uh, blew the shocks out. But you blew both of them out? One side more than the other. So that means you don't have a diff drop kit or anything because you don't need that yet? No. Body mount chop? Uh, no body mount chop yet, um, but I have spoken to Luke about it. Okay, so you do feel you need it? It does rub? Oh yeah, it takes chunks out of the tyres big time. So just like the N70, yeah. rubs on the same spot, eh? Yep. How long you had the suspension for? Four or five years. Or oh, okay, so it's pretty well flogged out then? Yeah, the rears, yeah. Especially tying the trailer. Yeah, I bet. And the amount of travelling you do, it's probably done pretty good then. Yeah, it has done. Tyres and wheels. Uh, so they're Maxxis Razor MT, uh, 285-65-17s, uh, 16s. So 33s essentially? 33s, yep. And the, these rims, apparently the only ones that will fit over the disc brakes on the FJs. And what offset is that? Neg 24, I believe. Alright, so Neg 24, you need a body mount chop and then you can fit 33s of a 2 inch lift. Yep. Does it rub any rails? No, that's it. Right, let's get into more detail on the tyres. How many Ks? Uh, roughly about 70,000. 70,000? 70, yeah, they've been on the car since two weeks after I bought the car. Wow, okay. That's pretty impressive actually. Let's get into some tyre pressures. Might help some people out. Highway, I run 40. On the sand, I'm about 17. And on rocks, I'm about 18. Oh, okay, yeah. so you go right down? Yeah, I do, yeah. So if it's off-road, you're right down yep. and your starting point is like 16, 17? Yep. Interesting. Both ends, same? Yeah, I keep them the same, it's roughly about the same weight. So you find the FJ is quite balanced front and rear, so I run the tyre pressure all over? Yeah, I, I feel it's it's pretty balanced. And your fuel tank? Yeah, she's tiny. How many <laughs> litres per hundred with these tyres, where you're sitting at now, what are you getting? If it's just the car without the trailer, it's about 15, 16 per hundred with the trailer is anywhere from 17 to 20. The range on this without the Jerry is at three, 360 to 400. Yeah. <laughs> Being a WA, you gotta have a good fuel range. His next mod has to be a fuel tank. I'm not yeah. sure if you agree with that. You no, agree? Definitely, yeah. Because I remember that time, we nearly ran out of fuel. Yeah, where we only had a kilometre to go. Yep, we went to one servo and they didn't have petrol. We had to go back to the other one. Yep. I thought I was going to tell you. Back. Yeah, yeah. Was that the most you ever got into a fuel tank? Yeah, that was definitely the most, yeah. I'm guessing you put the flares on because the tyres are poking a bit, yeah? Yeah, the factory ones were a little bit shorter and they didn't quite cover it and these just cover. What are they from? These are from eBay. <laughs> and I just then... wanted to say it. <laughs> <laughs> it's now time to look at the best part about the FJ and see what John has done in the back. Now, I'm going to jump out and let John take it over because I'm just going to block everything. Rightio. My jaws. <laughs> Given that the FJ is quite small and there's not a lot of room, I've had to maximise the draw system as much as I can by taking it all the way up to the roof. Uh, over here I've got my tool drawer that's got my spare parts and tools. Over here is my camping, cooking, recovery gear in this drawer. So in the pantry I've got everything nice and neat in a bag. It just I find it easier pulling it out placing it on the ground and going through it rather than having to go through the drawers when I'm cooking or whatever. Up here, this is my utensils uh, drawer with my plates. I've got everything uh, in foam uh, so the glass doesn't hit. Uh, cups have their own little spot and plates have their own spot. I know if there's something not here, you can, you can tell because it's, there's a hole missing like these two. So this is my favorite drawer. This is my coffee drawer where I keep gas canisters, Jet boil and my percolator gets me through the day. When I built this drawer system, one thing that was really high on my priority list was to have a big table. So this table is 1.4 long and it's also another utensils drawer. 40 litre Engel fridges normally open up this way, but because of the door, I've had to modify it so it would open up sideways, which is better access as well. So on this side, there is two hinges to make that possible. 
So making the most out of space, I've got my Osbri and first aid kit up the top here. Because everyone likes Ronnie's cooking segments, we'll go into one. Uh, we've got some pies, uh, gourmet pies, and uh, put them into the travel buddy. I find the travel buddy really useful, uh, especially on long distance trips. It was awesome for when I came over to WA in four days. The coolest part of the vehicle so far, in my opinion, are these gull wings because this is a useless spot without this, right? Yeah, pretty much. A big cavity in there with nothing normally. Power side? Yep, so I've got a lithium 100 amp hour battery powered by a Manager 30. How does that fit in there? It's a slim line. Okay, so how do you get the battery out? Through here or? No, you have to pull the drawers out. Okay, <laughs> so <laughs> big, the fail. <laughs> big effort if you have to. Yeah, sure. Yeah. But you haven't had to do anything? No, no. Um, the Manager 30, the brains are behind the seat. And you got an inverter somewhere because you got switches there, right? Yeah, so I've got an inverter which sits just in front of the battery. A okay. little, little 500 watt. This is a six gang switch which controls uh, the travel buddy, water pump, the USB power for the power sockets, um, the awning lights, the fridge, and the little cab light, which is just so you can see in here at night time. Water pump, how many litres then? So I'm running just a 20 litre jerry can inside cab. Oh, to a pump that pumps from the jerry can inside? Yeah, that's right. Oh, cool. So that means you can just take the jerry can out, fill it up, pull it back in. Yeah, yeah. And then I can plug that into a hot water system for a shower. So how does the pump work? It just works on a hose that you've stuck into the jerry can? It goes into a tap at the bottom of the jerry can. Cool. And 20 litres, that's all you got then? Yeah, 20 litres will last me roughly a week. <laughs> you <Yeah>. smell that? <laughs> Is there a uh, FJ something rubber out there? Loud and clear. Mate, what are you talking to me on the FJ? So I've got the GME TX3350. Roger, and you find the range is pretty good on that? Yeah, it is. I had to change the base plate because one of the cables came out, but since I've done that, it's uh, Perla. Antenna, where is it? What are you running? So for the antenna, it's a GME 6 dB antenna and that's on the front bull bar. You find the car blocks the rear signal sometimes or not? Normally I'm out the front, so yeah, I can't really uh, notice a difference. Usually the groups stay together pretty tight. Generally use it in peak hour traffic light right now? Uh, not usually, no. Any other radios in the car? I know you've got a, a good ton of handhelds. Yeah, I've got uh, a little 2 watt and a 5 watt that I use my second radio. Lighting wise, what are you running? Just up on the top, I'm running an eBay light bar that I've had for nearly 7 years. And then I've got the UltraVision 120 Max uh, spotties on the front and they're 9 inch. Happy with the light? Yeah, really happy with the lights. Uh, the light bar is pretty useless, but I just mainly use that for spread. Righto, like finding camp in the dark. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, you got a pretty good chance today because we, uh, we've left very early in the morning. You reckon you get to camp in the dark or not? Depends on what time uh, this all gets wrapped up. TRD out. RA out. <laughs> TRD, Troopy, Rhonda Darling. A big four litre. I used to have one of these. A motor, that is, not an FJ. Yeah, yeah. What do you think of it? Thirsty. Thirsty on fuel. I think it's enough power for me, though. Oh, I reckon they're, like, they're powerful. They're good for towing as well, I reckon. Yeah, yeah. Especially when you just leave it in fourth. How do you find the FJ tows being a shorter wheelbase? It tows quite well. I mean, the trailer's not super heavy, but it tows quite well. How come there's a battery tray here? That's empty and you got a battery tray there. So this is the cranking battery. I used to have a house battery over that side. Right. It died and I just never replaced it. I took the BCDC out and um, just cleaned up some of the wiring and never went back in. Got too hot, you reckon? Or? Yeah, for sure. All right, so this isn't normally a clear space in an FJ? No, no. Normally there's some other stuff there which has been re relocated, so that's an aftermarket kit. I understand you tuned the motor? Yeah, so it's 134 kilowatts and 253 newton meters of torque. All right, so aside from the numbers, that means to me. <laughs> it goes well, since it, you tickled it. It goes all right. I'd, 
I didn't tune it to get power. I tuned it for uh, fuel economy. No, that worked out for you. Not so great. <laughs> <laughs> you got a trans cooler on the auto? Yeah, so it's got a trans cooler. Because I was towing the trailer a fair bit, um, it was just a sensible idea to, to cool that uh, gearbox down. Yeah, always got to cool the trannies down. They can get a bit hot. Yeah. So that's all that's happening with the engine bay, right? So you're not doing anything else to it? You're no, happy with how it is? No, I just keep it, keep it stock, more reliable. How many on the uh, donk? Not long ago, just clocked 200. Nice, just run in then. Yeah. With the FJ, are you just relying on the A-Track system or have you got a diff locker in or anything? So uh, A-Track system in the front and rear diff lock, which is factory. Oh, it's factory? Yeah. I didn't know that. No. All FJs have that? Yeah. Didn't know. I thought they just had A-Track. All, all of the FJs that I'm aware of have the diff lock. Let's take a look inside the FJ interior. G'day, mate. G'day. This feels a bit weird opening the door here. That's like an aircraft. It is. So if you have a passenger, do they need to be, be able to strong enough to operate the aircraft door in case of the emergency? I wouldn't say it's that tight. Alrighty then. Let's talk about the interior. I want to know what you've done to the top there. So as we've been talking about, you know, space in this thing, you don't have a lot of it. So maximizing the amount of space. Uh, made this molly panel, which I'm able to have all the bags on. Oh, you made that then? Yeah. That's not something you can buy? No, it's not something you can buy. Last place I worked out, I was lucky enough to be able to use the CNC machine to cut it up. Nice. Mate, you look like you're sitting in a bloody lounge chair. They're not too bad. They're not too bad. Good for long distance. Yeah, I bet. That looks so comfy. Rate your lounge chair out of 10. Nine and a half. Oh, what could be improved? Probably a little bit more lumbar support. There's a couch. Almost. <laughs> the TV up the front. What's the mount you got there? Uh, so this is a tablet mount that I made. So it was intended to be a nav. I was going to run uh, a navigating program on it, but I never ended up doing it. So what's it doing now? It just sits there and looks like a tablet. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tablet. Fire extinguisher in the front. So there's your water, Jerry. Yep. 20 litres. And that hose comes from the back then? Yeah, so the hose runs up the side and into the pump. Oh, that's where you pull out of the other side of the gullwing, yeah? Yeah, so the compressor and the hose is in that gullwing. What's the go with the back there? Is that why it's so tight in the back of your car, that yeah. bloody thing? Yeah, so this is like all lightweight, soft storage, so pillows, um, extra uh, hoodies or whatever when it's cold. If he ever does a pub run, make sure you say a shotgun because sitting in the back of this thing absolutely sucks because what they've done with the FJ, all the focus has been on the front, not the back. I think there's more room, leg room, in the back of this than there is in the 79. Well, we're not talking about that here. We're talking about the FJ. <laughs> I guess Land Cruisers never really thought about passengers. If you, if you put those chairs in a 79, there'll be no seats in the back. Probably. Look how far back they are. Yeah, I know, right? I just like the leg space. Oh really? There's a camera in that thing up there? Oh, uh, that's factory. Is it? Yeah, factory reverse camera, which is only small, but I mean, I guess you can see. Okay, I know so much about FJs. Oh, this is where you have your shower? Yep. Do you have the doors open when you have a shower? No, close the doors and leave that window open. To get your stuff? To get the stuff, yep. <laughs> Rapid fire Q and A. Now the first question. I like this question. So it needs to be a bit of a, a lead into this question. The FJ has the same wheelbase as a Prado, correct? Yeah. Okay. Now a lot of people associate the FJ as the Toyota equivalent of the Jeep Wrangler. Do you agree? Oh, yeah, kind of. <laughs> so which does it resemble more, the Prado? Or the Jeep? The original FJ40. No, which one does it resemble more? The Prado or the Jeep? Well, considering it's pretty much Prado running gear, it's Prado. I got him there. I got him. You like to call this thing a Land Cruiser, is that correct? Yeah, well, you got to stir people up. Is this an FJ or a Land Cruiser? Oh, it'd have to be a Land Cruiser, I'd say. <laughs> You'll see his logbook right now, his manual. You'll see what he's done to it. It's pretty funny, actually. Playing a prank on someone, so I thought it would be a good idea to put Land Cruiser on it. You guys can tell us down below. Is this an, is this an FJ or is it a official Land Cruiser? We need to know from you guys. Just a question about the vehicle. Now, 
I always thought this was wrapped. Obviously, I know it's not wrapped, so it's painted, right? Yeah. Now, from my understanding is the boys from Sidetracked asked you to paint the car and then they rejected you in the end. Well, how, how's the story go? Well, well yeah. I painted the car. I thought when they wrapped their cars that that was an invitation for me to join the Sidetrack crew, but they actually rejected me. I thought it was the other way around. They're telling me the other way around. No. They're saying that they wrapped it first and you copied them the paint. No, no, this, this is factory colour. Except for the black, that's not factory. Best thing about the FJ? Uh, comfortability, if that's a word. Yeah, I think it is. It's uh, Comfortability is a word. I can, I can confirm. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, is that because of the lounge chairs? Yeah, and the ride on it. It's a comfortable ride. Have you ever sat in the back of your FJ while someone else has driven? Uh, I have not mine, but a FJ. Next modification for the FJ? Uh, definitely have to be a long range tank. I would agree. What size did it make for this? I think they do a 120 litre. How many litres now? Uh, 60. Yeah, that'll be good. Double your range. 700 k's, eh? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe 500. <laughs> Worst thing about the FJ, apart from being at the shopping mall? The fuel economy. Best mod you've done to the FJ that made the biggest difference? Draw system. Including the gull wings? Definitely including the gull wings. Most difficult mod to do to this vehicle that needed a lot of trial and error to get it right? Goings. They took a lot of time. I, I drew up like 16 different um, brackets to get it right. 16 different brackets? Yeah, 16 and drew them up and cut them and fitted them and then realised something else was interfering. Wow. Persistence. <laughs> How long did that take? Full day to draw it, draw it up and cut them out. Best trip in the FJ? Would have to be Savannah Way in the Northern Territory across to Cairns. Most difficult trip you've had to film for me so far? Ningan. Oh, that one. Yeah. So Ningan was the most difficult. I thought, thought it'd be the Flinders. No, Flinders, oh, that was, that was tiring, but Ningan was, it, it was hot and the flies were an absolute pain in the ass. We nearly had to cancel the trip because of these guys. Not quite cancel, but yeah, postponed. Having a rooftop on the FJ, has it made a huge difference or can you even remember how it drove before you had the rooftop? There is not... Oh, not a lot of difference as in top weight or anything like that. Um, I did have a roof, the factory roof rack, which had a lot of stuff on it before. Don't really notice the weight difference. Worst modification on the vehicle? What is it? I drive. And you hate it? And I don't use it. Most expensive mod on the FJ? Uh, the Manager 30. More, that's more than the rooftop. Class that as a mod. <laughs> but yeah, uh, okay, yeah, the rooftop would be uh, the most expensive part. The cheapest modification on the whole vehicle? The draw system. Because you did DIY. Yeah. Best advice you can give to any new FJ owner? Plan uh, how you want to set it out because it you won't get it on the first go. So how many times have you redone the rear on yours? Uh, this is my second, third time. That's not bad. I thought you were about to say seventh. No, no, no. Two drawers and then these drawers. Do you think uh, Ghost Productions did an okay job today? I'll have to check their files when I get back to the office. Before I throw this question to Jono, what should be his next modification to the FJ? Who sponsors the show? Train team at East Hall. What do they do? Online parts, OEM parts. And when can we get it? Whenever you want. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for watching another episode of Modified. Thanks for bringing the FJ on. No worries. See you next time. Ciao. <laughs>